In this video, I want to talk about a mistake I made in a previous video called Free Energy versus the Laws of Physics. But I also wanted to talk a little bit more about the back spike that comes out of the coil any time you interrupt the power going into it. What you're looking at here is a 62-pound coil that's got about 2,500 feet of wire in it. And it's a 12-gauge wire, and it's only got about 4 ohms resistance. And uh, basically what I'm doing is I've got a 12-volt battery right here. And I am hooking it up to the coil, and then I'm pulling it away as quickly as I can. As you can see, when I'm pulling it away, there's an arc that occurs that's an outrush of power. As a magnetic field in the coil collapses, it produces an outrush of power that actually arcs right across the air, right back to my alligator clip and goes back into the battery. And believe it or not, this outrush of power is reversed in polarity as opposed to what I'm putting into it. For those that aren't familiar with how the uh, magnetic field collapsing works in a coil, basically, if you were to look at this schematic here, here I've got a 12-volt battery. And uh, as I close my switch, that immediately energizes this coil. It produces a magnetic field. And that magnetic field uh, collapses when you open the switch. And when it collapses, basically the magnetic uh, particles, whatever they are, we don't know what a magnetic field consists of, but whatever it is, it rushes back to the wire from which it came. In the process of doing so, it passes by neighboring wires within the coil, and it produces an outrush of power that's reverse in polarity. In fact, this principle is used in what they call um, boost converters. You'll often see them on circuit boards, and um, they use them to up the voltage a little bit if they need a higher voltage for a particular part of a circuit. In fact, this is kind of one here. Um, basically, what you're looking at is you've got a, uh, a diode here that's configured in a way that it will only conduct when you've got positive going this way through the diode and into this capacitor. I can actually charge the capacitor by closing the switch and opening it. The minute the field collapses and I've got the positive going voltage, it comes in this way. And of course, the negative vo going voltage will go in this way and charge the capacitor. In fact, I built this actual circuit here using this coil and there's there was so much of a so much outrush power coming here that the minute I opened the coil or opened the switch rather, I got about 80 volts uh, that immediately charges capacitor up to 80 volts even though my input is only 12 volts. Now this this back spike that occurs can actually be quite problematic in electronic circuits and one of the things that can happen as they can arc across a switch like this and it can actually start to burn the contacts. Another area where I've seen this uh, become a problem was where I put together a circuit something like this a uh, few years ago. I had a uh, DC motor and a 12 volt LED lamp on the same uh, power bus like this and the minute I opened my switch all of a sudden my LED burned out and I couldn't figure out what happened and finally I realized after it ha happened I think it was a second or third time um, I realized that the inductive kick or the back spike coming out of the motor was working just like a coil it was actually backing up into the LED and, and the voltage was so high it was arcing across the LED and it ruined it and the way to solve that problem was to put a reverse bias diode across the uh, power inputs like this and that way when you had the uh, if this was negative going in this way and you had positive coming out this way it w the diode would conduct as long as positive was coming out this way and negative going in that way and the diode would, uh, would absorb the spike rather than the LED the diode was able to handle the spike a lot better than the LED so that was what I did to save the uh, LED also, they, oftentimes in uh, televisions, you'll notice that they put the reverse bias diodes across relays because even the small coils and relays will sometimes cause a back spike to, uh, to come out and to uh, damage the driving circuitry that powers it. Now, I had mentioned uh, that the uh, boost regulators or boost converters were often used in electronic circuits, and uh, I'm going to show you what they look like here. Here's one. Often it's going to be a little 8-pin IC like this. I know you can't see that real well with this camera. But often it'll have a little driver IC like this and a little inductor next to it. And what I'll often do to test them, I've got my little, I've showed them in my previous video how I often use what I call my audio oscilloscope. I'll often take my little inductive probe and I'll put it across the inductors like this just to hear if they're operating. Because these IC's do fail 
from time to time. And I'd like to friend, uh, thank my friend uh, Damon Morrow and uh, Justine Young and uh, the other gentleman, John Preher, for pointing some of these things out to me. Uh, Damon's written several books on uh, electronic troubleshooting. And uh, anyway, he, uh, he mentioned to me that uh, these were high failure items. So for what it's worth, uh, those are some of the problems you can run into with the back spike. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention in this video, I I'd said in the, in the video I made on free energy versus the laws of physics, that I had thought that the power coming out of a coil could actually be considered more for a small segment of time, even though it wasn't more overall power. And one of my viewers wrote me and said I was incorrect about that. And I, I ran a few tests, and I realized he was right, that I what I'd said was incorrect, that uh, you don't have more power coming out of a coil. You have more voltage, and uh, that can be useful in, in a circuit, but you, you don't have more power. Power, of course, consists of voltage times current. And so uh, there you have it. Anyway, for what it's worth, uh, hope you enjoy the video. Hope you're finding them educational. And as always, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up.